Okay, he hello everyone. Welcome for the, to the first um, after lunch session. Uh, I'm Michael Franz, and uh, um, we're here to welcome Jinjun Chen from Tsinghua University. Uh, and he's going to give us a talk on host of trouble, multiple host ambiguity in HTTP implementations. Go ahead. Thank you. <coughs> uh, hello, I'm, I'm Jian Jin Chen, uh, a PhD student of approved high xin duans at Tsinghua University. Uh, this is a joint work with UC Berkeley, ICSI, and Huawei Canada. In, in this paper, we talk about a new class of attacks which exploits uh, multiple host ambiguity. Uh, in the traditional internet, uh, a client request is directly sent to the web server. Only two parties are involved in the communication. communication. And uh, in the current uh, internet, uh, many different uh, middle blocks are added to the network. Uh, a client request needs to be processed by multiple different systems. And these systems are often independent from each other. So uh, if any two parties are inconsistent in parsing a HTTP message, it could cause security problems. Uh, many attacks exploiting the ambiguity uh, have been found in HTTP implementations. Uh, in 2005, Linhart uh, found HTTP request smuggling attack which exploits uh, ambiguity of a content length header. And in, two, and, uh, in 2013, uh, HTTP evader exploits multiple ambiguity of uh, HTTP response headers. And in the same year, James Cato uh, used host ambiguities uh, to exploit insufficient validation of web ap ap applications, which can lead to phishing and cross-site uh, script. Uh, but in, uh, in, our, in our work, we present a class of new attacks uh, which can cause severe security consequences. Uh, we studied uh, 33 popular implementations and found a number of, implement of, of potential exploits. And uh, we conduct a large scale measurement and found our attacks affect many transparent caches. Uh, in, in this talk, we will mainly answer three questions. First, uh, how to find the host ambiguity? Second, uh, how to exploit this ambiguity? Third, uh, how prevalent this, is this problem? First, we look at uh, some details. <coughs> Generally, processing a uh, HTTP request can be divided into three steps. Uh, first, uh, a textual message is passed into valid uh, protocol fields, and th then this protocol fields is interpreted into semantic structures, and this semantic structure is used for further actions. In the parsing and interpreting of HTTP semantics, one of the most important HTTP field is host header. Uh, in, in forward proxy, it's used to, for routing to decide the forwarding destination. Uh, in transparent cache, it's used for caching key to isolate a different web cache. Uh, in CDN, it's used for routing and cache. In firewall, it's used for identifying requests for different websites. In websites, it's used for locating resource in a co-hosting environment. So host header play a key role in different HTTP systems. Here's the point. Uh, if, the, if host header, the key information is ambiguous between different parties, it could cause disastrous consequences. So this is the main idea of our attack. Then we talk about how to find ambiguities. We have three techniques. The first technique is multiple host header. Here, we simplify the attack scenario into uh, three parties, client, downstream, and upstream. Downstream and upstream can be any, uh, any, party, any two parties in the HTTP processing chain. For example, downstream is the firewall, upstream is the website. Then a client sends a request with two host headers. Downstream and upstream may have different preference. For example, downstream prefers to the first host header. 
but upstream accept the last host header. Then the inconsistency between downstream and upstream happens. Let's look at the HTTP standard. Currently, the most popular version of HTTP standard is HTTP 1.1, which have two RFCs. The first, the old standard implicitly requires injection of a multiple host header. And in the latest RFC, it explicitly requires the rejection of multiple host header. So HTTP uh, standard is, is clear. How about our implementations? We tested uh, 33 implementations. From the table, we can see that uh, only a few of them, like IIS, reject multiple host header. And um, for most of them, like NGX, accept the first host header. And uh, some of them, like Tencent, ESET, accept the last host header. So most of them don't follow RFC. And uh, some are inconsistent with others. The second technique is a space around the host header. Space around the host header can appear in two forms. Space preceded the host and the space between host and the colon. Why the space opens a new opportunity for host ambiguity? Here's an example. Uh, assume that downstream and upstream uh, uh, prefer to the first host header. So, so there should be no ambiguity between downstream and upstream. But we can bypass it by adding a space before the host header. The, the downstream accept the, what, the space preceded host and take the request as a.com. But upstream do not recognize this, this, the white space preceded host and uh, accept b.com as the first valid host. So uh, the inconsistency happens again. HTTP standards, <coughs> the, old, uh, uh, the old standards uh, state that uh, space preceded host must be processed as a fault line with the previous header. If the space preceded host is the first header, it implicitly requires rejection. And for the space between host and the colon, uh, it implicitly states that systems could uh, recognize it. But in the latest standard, it clearly uh, states that systems should uh, reject space around the host headers. How about our implementations? Uh, from the table, we can see that uh, implementations vary in processing space around the host header. Some of them recognize it, and some don't recognize it. Uh, and uh, most of them don't follow the latest standard. The third technique is absolute URI as a request target. Uh, host in absolute URI is another ambiguity of a, another source of ambiguity. Uh, for example, downstream prefer to the host in absolute URI, but upstream, upstream prefer to host header. Another source of ambiguity is the schema of the absolute URI. Assume that uh, downstream and upstream, upstream prefer to the host absolute UI, but we can bypass it by, by using this, this, invalid, uh, uh, this invalid schema. But downstream recognizes this schema and accept uh, this request as a.com. And upstream do not recognize this schema and take the URI as a relative URI. So, he accepted the request as b.com. So inconsistency happens again. Uh, HTTP standard. <coughs> Both standards uh, uh, require the systems should uh, prefer to host the in the absolute UI. But for the schema of absolute UI, both standards uh, don't have a clear description. Uh, HTTP implementation. <coughs> All the implementations follow the latest standard, uh, prefer to the host in absolute I, except Akamai. How about our implementations? <coughs> uh, for the schema of, of absolute I, uh, most of, some of them uh, 
through, accept any schema, and uh, some of them only accept HTTP or HTTPS. Note that the three, all the three techniques can be combined together. So the space of host ambiguity can increase once again. Uh, now, we can craft, we, we can, it's easy for us to craft an ambiguous request to cause inconsist inconsistency. Then we will show uh, five attacks exploiting this, um, this ambiguity. Uh, this is a cut can be divided into two, cut, two categories, uh, catch poisoning and filter bypass. The first attack uh, exploit the situation when attackers' website and the victims' website are hosted on the same server. Uh, it can cause CDN cache poisoning. Attacker can send, send a request like this. Uh, but Akamai accepts the first host header. When it forward to the upstream, they change the order of the request. Then Squid accepts the first first, uh, first uh, white space preceded host. Then Akamai uh, cache attacker's content as victim.com. Uh, the second attack uh, requires CDN or requires attacker's website and uh, victim's website hosted on the same, same CDN, use the same CDN service. Uh, this requirement is easy to be met. The, uh, then attacker send a request like this. Uh, Apache traffic server don't recognize what space preceded host, so he think victim.com is the first host. But, but Akamai recognized what space preceded the host. So he accepted the request as attacker.com. Then Apache traffic server will cache attacker's resource as a victim.com, which results in cache poisoning. Uh, the third attack is, is more serious. It can cache poisoning any, any HTTP website. Uh, the course is it is a is a, a incons inconsistency between internal model of secret. How the attack works like this: attacker establish a collection to attacker's server. Then he send an ambiguous request through this collection. Then secret will check the destination IP address for consistency, but it is checked against as attacker.com. Then attacker server return a malicious reply. Then squid cache it as a victim.com. So uh, this inconsistency cause uh, catch poisoning. When victims visit victim.com, it will get attacker's malicious reply. So this, this attack uh, affect many in fact, have a bigger impact on the current internet since transparent cache has been widely de deployed in the current internet. Uh, another attack vector is, is a filter bypass. Uh, it said a fair word, uh, blacklists uh, block.com. Then attacker can send a request like this to bypass the fair word. Uh, it said accept the last host header. So he believes that this request is going to, is going to alone.com and download does, doesn't block it. But NGX recognize it as a block.com. Then attacker can get content from attacker.com. The first attack is a web application firewall bypass. Uh, the core idea of, the, of, of this, uh, this attack is to Make uh, make attacking make, make CDN believe that the attacking request belongs to WAF in alone.com. Then does not enforce any security policy. Uh, for the detail of this attack, you can you can find it in the paper. Uh, now uh, in the paper we have uh, showed five different attacks. Uh, 
we have much more uh, similar, similar examples. We tested uh, uh, 33 popular implementations and found 202 different combinations that could be exploited. Uh, among all the attacks we found, we, we believe that uh, cash poisoning targeting uh, transparent cash is the most uh, serious threat. So we want to know how many transparent cash in the current internet are available. To answer this question, we conduct uh, a, a experiment, measurement experiments by using online flash advertisement. We implement uh, 16 different test cases into our flash. And we brought a 1.5 million impression on U-turn platform. We also hosted our testing flash on a large website for 20 days. Let's look at the measurement results. Uh, in both experiments, we found around 97% of internet users served by a transparent cache can be infected. Uh, we have reported it to uh, third CC and the individual vendors. Uh, vendors are actively addressing that. Uh, mitigation. Uh, HP standards need to be precise and complete. For example, uh, uh, the schema of of uh, the schema of, of, of a solo URI and uh, HTTP implementations should uh, be complied to RFC to avoid the inconsistency. Uh, per RFC, the, the correct approach is to treat multiple host header and uh, what space around the file names as errors. And for website, it, they can deploy HTTPS with a preloaded HTTPS to av avoid this transparent transparent poisoning. Uh, to, to aid in identifying the, the host of trouble attacks, we also provide an online checking tool to automatically evaluate whether your, lot, whether, whether your network are available to the transparent cache or not. Uh, this is, uh, you can visit this, this, this URI to test your network. Uh, just a couple of minutes ago, uh, I test, uh, I have a, I run a test through my phone's network uh, there, uh, and I found a transparent cache in my mobile network. So you can also have a try uh, through, uh, through this website. Uh, discussion. <coughs> uh, Joint poster law is also uh, phrased as, well, is also called a robustness principle. Also, it is a good de design principle uh, to, to robust network system, but in an adversarial situation, it could cause uh, potential exploitable ambiguities. So developers should be aware of limitations of joint po uh, poster's law. Uh, second point is uh, when we review the, the code of uh, the code of implementations, uh, we found some implementations cite uh, RFC uh, the latest RFC RFC seventy two uh, thirty here and there, but they still did a wrong implementation. So, so we 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 think. Uh, uh, specification have the, uh, can be improved because specification writing in natural language inevitably uh, introduce ambiguity. So maybe we can pr provide a reference implementation. Uh, it could uh, help to uh, avoid uh, uh, ambiguity. The third point is, is when design protocols, we should try to avoid uh, introduce overlapping semantics in, in protocol fields rather than uh, resolve such issues by specification rules because even if uh, 
you uh, have uh, you you have specifications in 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 uh, have rules in specifications, but implementations may still do not uh, comply with the RFC. Uh, you can see it from our uh, our work. Uh, finally, uh, our work also highlights uh, uh, the the importance of a standard compliance. So, uh, is it possible to automatically uh, evaluate uh, consistency uh, between uh, implementation and the standard? This, this is a research question. Okay, that's all. Thank you.